one of the reasons why I like doing these little videos is that I get to learn about things that I wouldn't know before and I wouldn't generally look at. And something that I saw while doing my South Africa video is um, this island, 2000, over 2,800 kilometers away from South Africa. And it's called, uh, I'm going to get the pronunciation wrong, Tristan de Cunha. Um, it is the world's most remote island, um, according to Google and also the Wikipedia page, the most remote island in the world. Um, what is the most remote island? Tristan de Cunha. So yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of islands in the world that are quite remote, but this is the most remote one. And I quite by accident, just by zooming out, spotted it in the Atlantic Ocean. Um, pretty cool place. I mean, it must be a volcanic island. Um, you can see there's a volcano. Um, and over the years, as the volcano would have erupted, it would have sent um, lava rolling down the hills and it would have cooled. And actually, this island probably originated under the sea and would have risen up over time as the, uh, um, as the rock and the lava would have hardened. Um, it would then burst up through it again and keep building and building and building bit by bit. That's how volcanoes in the sea tend to develop. And it's part of a, a network of some islands. There's an island out here called Inaccessible Island. Drastically cool name as well. And basically, just wilderness. I mean, this is as wild a spot on the planet, I suppose, as it gets. I mean, <laughs> not Antarctica, but, you know, I don't know if there's much farming going on here. Um, overall, I think there's about 250 people living on the main island. The main island has got one bank, one policeman, um, I believe a church, and only 250 people. So really small, really isolated community. There's also a second small island here, Nightingale Island. Nightingale, yes. So I think, um, according to the Wikipedia page, the members of the main island go here for holiday trips, that kind of thing. If you want to get a connection by boat, you might have to wait months uh, before you can get a connection from the main island to other places. For example, there is one doctor on the island, and when people have got injuries that the doctor can't cater for they have to contact fishing ves fishing vessels to uh, bring the injured person all the way over to Cape Town back along there um, there's one more island down here part of the network as well the collection called Goff Island and this one's interesting um, again super super uninhabited and really really beautiful landscape interesting yeah just look at that amazing that's a huge arch I suppose it could be water going flowing through that Unfortunately, I can't get any. Um, yeah, I can't get any more pictures closer to it. Just a wonderful, wonderful landscape. Let's quickly get a picture of this up. Um, Goth Island. Let's see what we get. get. Some images. Yeah, look at that. It's just incredible. Just amazing. The uh, that's Tristan da Cunha, Goth Island. Yeah, wow. Just you know, the end of the world basically. There's the location. Um, okay, let's quickly go back here. I wanted to show you the only bit of infrastructure on this island, and that is the South African Weather Service weather station. And we see the buildings there. Um, so I'd imagine maybe there's someone stationed there, probably not more than likely somebody comes there for a couple of months and just collects data. Um, that's quite a lot of buildings there, though. It's quite interesting. Can we get a picture? Okay, I need to turn off my distance measurements. Can we get a picture of this up? Yeah, it's almost like a little um, Mars... Um, colony. <laughs> this is what a Mars colony would look like. Yeah, quite a bit of infrastructure. Quite interesting. I wonder what these pods are. They could be storage containers. Look at that. Is that the same one? That is interesting. This might be somewhere else, but um, again, look at that. Looks just like a Mars station. Super cool. That is super interesting. Look at all that orange. Very, very interesting indeed. Okay, let me move on to the next bit of this video. I wanted just to show you um, the islands that are part of the network. So basically the next island that would be connected to it that comes under this group is St. Helena. And that's also, I think, about a thousand kilometers away. I believe St. Helena is where Napoleon was sent to prison. Let me just check that. Napoleon, St. Helena. Napoleon, for those who don't know, was the emperor of France who lost at Waterloo. St. Helena is his site of his second exile following his defeat in 1815. Yeah, so I got that one right. Um, also a beautiful island. And I think there is a, uh, a possibility to... Oh dear, no, I don't do that. Uh, a possibility to get a picture from the top of one of these islands. I think it was the Ascension Island, the third island in that chain. 
and I wanted to quickly show you this because this was really beautiful. So um, yeah, just look at this island. This is just crazy to me. Uh, let's see, was this the one? Hmm, curious. There was definitely one of these islands that had a beautiful viewpoint, and I was able to drag this onto it. Maybe I already have it open. Let me just. Oh yeah, here we go. Look at that. This is the top of one of the islands. I'll zoom out in a minute to clarify which one it is. I believe it's Ascension. That is just the most amazing thing. And yeah, this pole to mark the high spot. Maybe this is even, um, yeah, let me quickly just go back out to check where this is exactly. Is it? Yeah, okay, it is the Ascension Island. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And here we've got Royal Air Force Station. Might have been there since the Second World War. Royal Air Force Station Ascension, and there is the runway. Can we see any of the military kit? Hmm. We'll be all under hangars, I suppose. There's probably some fighters there or something stationed in that area. Um, there's one or two other small things before I finish the video, because this won't be a very long video. I wanted just to point out a very interesting phenomenon. Um, let me see. It's to do with the magnetic um, field on the islands. Probably have it opened. Here we go. South Atlantic Anomaly. So here again is the map. That's where the island is located. Um, this is to do with the, with the magnetic field. Um, so it's weaker, I suppose, in this area due to the fact that the Earth isn't perfectly concentric. So concentric would be this perfect roundness. The Earth is more of an ovally kind of a shape in parts. And that means that the magnetic field is a little bit different here, which means that anything orbiting above it um, experiences stronger radiation. And um, this is proven, as in the relevance of this, is proven by the fact that in the NASA um, Mission Control Center in Houston, you've got there that area highlighted. Um, so it's just a really interesting part of the world, super different. Um, in terms of economy, because this is an economics channel to a degree, let's quickly run through um, the economics of the island. Um, okay, I think it has opened here. Uh, we'll go back here. A mixed economy, based on traditional subsistence farming and fishing to provide islanders with their own food. Um, it wouldn't be uncommon for them to work multiple jobs. Basically, they could work fishing in the summer, but also some government roles in the uh, winter. Um, just a really different part of the world. Interestingly, if you want to visit the island, you have to do jump through a lot of hoop uh, loopholes. Through a lot of hoops, not loopholes, through a lot of hoops. You need to prove that you have a return ticket to get out of there. Yeah, I need to bring enough money to cover your entire stay, and you can only be allowed to arrive there if you have been um, approved by the Island Council, which is a group of 12 people. Um, so a very small council. Um, there was an explosion on the island, um, and as the people left, they didn't return for about a year, I believe, um, which is also crazy. Imagine you know, having to leave your home um, and not being able to come back. For such a long period of time. Um, let's see, where was the statement about the eruption in 1961? The um, There was an eruption, it came very close to the town of Edinburgh Seven Seas, forced the evacuation of all the people, they took to the water in open boats and were picked up by um, an, another boat, and the following year an expedition reported that the place had survived the town and all their families returned in 1963. Very interesting lifestyle, you know. I mean, you really are so remote, and you're really up, you know, you're living by yourself. Imagine if the whole world stopped around them, would they even notice? I mean, maybe they have tele, I mean, they do, of course, have telecommunications now and things like that, but would they survive totally by themselves? They probably would, you know, if they're fishing and if they've got their own methods of feeding themselves. Um, it might be one of the most resilient places in the world, in a sense, if the weather effects wouldn't, you know, bother them too much. Um, so in a sense. Yeah, this place is just so remote, it's so far away, and it's just interesting to put in the context of other places, um, like real bigger economies in the world. This is just a tiny, tiny, you know, as basic as it gets, and yet it's probably more resilient than a lot of other places due to the fact that they have to do everything for themselves, and both so rarely come to this place. Um, yeah, something small that I saw in my video the last day for South Africa, and I thought I wanted to share it with you as well.